messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, this is a local one. The Daphne cheerleaders in Daphne, Alabama, so, you know, little town in South Alabama, they got in trouble, and I'm using that word, you know, sort of loosely, but they got in the news at the very least for a social media post because a petition has been filed against them, and it had to do with them pace, uh, posting on social media this picture of them posing with a shirt that has the likeness of the rebel flag on it. So you can see there a uh, picture of these girls from Daphne High. They're holding a t-shirt that says, I heart redneck boys. And in the heart, you can see the, the sort of the cross of the, what, what is commonly referred to as the rebel flag. So you can see that there's, it's obviously just a spoof off of being in the South. That, that's what it's intended to do. But there was a change.org petition that was started over this that now has over 10,000 signatures to get them kicked off the team as a result of this. And that's because on their cheerleading squad, there was a black cheerleader named Reagan Coleman who actually quit the team and started, her mom is the one that started this petition to try to get them kicked off the team as a result of this action. This is a quote from her mom. There's no two sides about that flag. That means hatred. That's what it stands for, for us. Okay, well, if there's no two sides about it, why would you say that's what it stands for, for us? If, if there's no two sides, then wouldn't it stand that for everyone? But anyway, I digress. We were oppressed with that flag. They used it when they burned crosses in our ancestors' yards. When it was railed around on horses, I don't know what history you're reading, but if you read the U.S. history, it tells you exactly what that flag stands for, and what it means, especially to African Americans. Again, why saying what it means to African Americans if there's no two sides to it? If it's so cut and dry, then why do you have to add the disclaimer there? Anyway, you know, again, that's just me being overly analytical. But if this is really the intention here, like if you really believe these, what, seven or eight high school girls that happen to be on the cheer squad, that they were really posting this because we really hate black people, so we're going to get together and take this picture, and, and that'll stick it to the black people. Does anyone really believe that was the motivation? And if so, why would they pose with a t-shirt that says, I heart redneck boys? You don't have to dig super deep. It's not a really deep theological or philosophical message here. It's pretty cut and dry and, and pretty out in the open. Like You don't have to do a lot of context clue digging to get to the real intended message underneath all of this. This is obviously something that they were doing that they thought would either be silly or fun, whatever. But the point is, the idea that this was done with some kind of racial animus inside, that's just stupid. Why not just pose with the actual rebel flag if that were the intention in the case? Uh... I don't think that even that necessarily would have meant that racism is the only way to interpret that, but if that's what they were going for, why couch it and try to hide it under this? If you've ever met an actual real racist, they don't hide their racism. They're pretty darn open about it. And so they're trying to do like they're trying to make the case that that was the motivation behind it. I just don't buy that. I, I don't buy it at all. It doesn't make sense to me. And furthermore, on all of this, the flags, even if you think that the flag is bad, no matter how bad a flag is, like even if we're talking about the straight up Nazi flag or the, the, the sickle and hammer or uh, North Korea or China, like Mao Zedong's China, that kind of thing, uh, those are flags that I wouldn't use as symbols because of their association with mass murderers and that kind of thing, and, and that's obvious. But even those, which are the worst possible examples we could come up with, the flag didn't oppress anybody. Nazism did oppress people, socialism did oppress people, and actually socialism still does oppress some people, depending on where you are in the world. But even so, it's not the flag that's oppressing people. That, that's one thing that, like, the flag is oppressing me. No, the flag's not oppressing you. Like, the flag, you can make the case that it's a bad symbol, that it's a symbol we shouldn't use. Like, you can have that discussion, and, and I'm open to having that discussion. But you can't make the case that the flag itself is oppressing you. Flags don't do that. That's not a, not a thing. Uh, but anyway, 
This is another quote from the, the same lady, the mom of this black cheerleader who was offended by this and started the petition. The first thing I thought was, how bold of them. You can cheer for black football players, you cheer for black basketball players, and you cheer with two black cheerleaders on your side, and this is what you put up? Wouldn't that be pretty solid evidence that these girls aren't racist? I mean, granted, I don't know a whole lot about Daphne High School. I don't know what the racial demographics are. Frankly, don't care all that much. But I assume, based on what this woman who does have a daughter at Daphne High, based on what she's saying, that there is at least a significant portion of the basketball team and the football team that are black, and also they have teammates on their team that are also black, isn't that a pretty good case for these girls not, I mean, maybe even if there's one racist on the team that that was not the intent of the group. I mean, if you have a real genuine racist that finds black people detestable and disgusting and doesn't want to be around them, you would tend to think that that person wouldn't want to be on the same team with a black person, sharing space with them, spending time with them, practicing with them, uh, in you know, in the locker room, on the football field, on the basketball court, voluntarily choosing to spend time around black people and doing so around other teams which have a lot of black people on them in which they are cheering for them to do well. I tend to think that, like, I don't know, Mrs. Hitler probably doesn't do that. Or other people that might be racist if, if it meant they had to cheer in favor of black athletes and do so side by side with other black cheerleaders, they'd probably be like, yeah, you know what, I'm out. This is actually a pretty good reason for thinking that what they did was not racially motivated and that they don't hate black people and that using that symbol, even if it was maybe unwise or insensitive, was not intended to be something that was uh, spurring on of racial hatred or trying to communicate that. See, that seems to me to be the much safer, more plausible explanation for what happened at Daphne High if you're looking at all of the context clues here. But here's the thing that I would ask, and, and I'm just going to go straight to the scripture on this one because I think that this is the model that works best, and, and this actually isn't exclusive to just disputes over things that might involve race. This goes to just the human experience overall. The biblical model for something like this, if you're having some kind of problem with another person, is to go to the person and to get an explanation from them first. And if you believe that them to be an error, maybe go back later with another person to try to talk to them and, and see if this problem that you're having can be resolved. Not ignoring that, going straight to creating a petition to get them kicked off of their high school cheerleading team, that seems to not be the correct way to handle a position like this, to just going over their head. This is what bothers me so much about this. They're bullying a bunch of teenage girls. Do you feel really big and strong and powerful and influential because you're, you're picking on a bunch of teenage girls? I mean, like, I don't think it was necessarily, especially, you know, with everything that's going on in the world right now, probably the smartest thing to do. But is this really something worth, I mean, if you've ever hung around high school athletes, and I have quite a bit, this is something that's super important to them. Sometimes it's like their whole life. I don't know if it is in the case of these cheerleaders, but like you're, you're really trying to take that away from them for something that at the very worst is probably just a bad judgment call that you know, was probably just intended to be a, a goofy, silly thing for them to do, and they may not have even realized what they were doing was something that was going to be, you know, perceived this way. Because for many people, it's not. I actually go over, in another Daily Dose of Stupid, I think, or it may not be a Daily Dose of Stupid, but in another segment at some point, I actually went over through human communication theory and how symbols can mean different things to different people, and, and there could be miscommunication that causes animosity despite that not being the intent of either party. So I highly recommend going back and watching that. But just looking at this, I don't understand why that would be the only logical conclusion as this person seems to assert. And to another thing too, again, trying to take the, the racial aspect out of it and just going to the human condition here, 
do we really, really want, just sort of generally speaking, do we want our high schools policing the social media pages of students and what they do when they're not on campus or not in the care of the school? Because that seems to me to be a pretty darn slippery slope. Like, I don't, I don't want the school policing that kind of behavior. I don't really think that's any of the school's business. Now, maybe if it happens on school grounds, I mean, none of the girls are even wearing a cheerleading uniform. I assume that all those girls just happen to be on the cheerleading squad, but it's not like this was posted to the official school page. It's not like they were doing this with school uniforms or cheerleading uniforms on. Like, there doesn't really seem to be any association with the cheerleading team or the school itself, and yet we're trying to socially engineer uh, behavior based on something that some people don't like and, and trying to take privileges away from somebody, even though their action, whether you could argue whether it was okay or, or not okay, acceptable or not acceptable, you certainly can't argue that it had anything to do with the school. I just don't understand all of that. So here's sort of my counter question to all of this. What would have happened if you reversed it? Again, a very simple test to see if something is, is racist or maybe over the top or whatever. What if you had a group of black cheerleaders posing with a Black Lives Matter shirt? What do you think the, the reaction would have been there? Well, we don't really have to wonder because that's happened. In fact, something that's much more directly supportive of Black Lives Matter has happened. And by the way, keep in mind that the rebel flag has, yes, been used as a symbol of the Klan before, but not exclusively. And when it comes to Black Lives Matter, that's an actual organization that has a creed and a, a statement of goals, many of which are highly Marxist in nature and anti-family, anti-God, anti-government, uh, anti-country, all of those things. The rebel flag has been used by some really evil, hateful, racist groups but Black Lives Matter is an actual organization with a unified theme. And yet, this is something that you can see from the Bowie State cheerleaders. You can see this. And uh, this isn't something that happens, like, at a not-official event. This is an actual routine the cheerleaders were doing as a part of the cheerleading team at a competition. You couldn't make the case that this was in no way associated with the school. Do you know how many conservatives and right-leaning people were calling for all of these women who uh, not only participated in this event, but did so in a very public way as in the official capacity of being a cheerleading team for Bowie State? You know how many conservatives were really upset about this and tried to get them kicked off the team? None that I could find. I don't even remember this being a big news story when it happened. See, that highlights a difference in the thinking of somebody on the right and the somebody on the left. The people on the left want to punish and socially engineer out any behavior that they deem is unacceptable. The person on the right may see that and say, well, that's dumb, they shouldn't do that, and I don't like that, it bothers me because Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization that espouses the destruction of of the Western of Western civilization and the nuclear family as a good thing. But as horrible as that may be, as much as it may make me personally upset, I don't want to kick them off the cheerleading team for that. I don't want to ruin that person's life because I happen to have a disagreement with them. One of the maxims of this show is that disagreement isn't hate. And I think this illustrates that principle pretty well. So the the natural counter to this may be. Yeah, but the thing is, and I've heard this so many times since this whole debate started, there's Black Lives Matter, the organization, and there's also Black Lives Matter, just the slogan that people sometimes use to uh, communicate something that's not connected to all the other stuff that the organization believes in. Oh, so you're saying that there are multiple ways that using that phrase could be interpreted you know, kind of like the rebel flag, that it could be interpreted as racial hatred, and it could also be interpreted as just, I like the South, and I like where I'm from, and I like the symbol and think it looks cool. By the way, I think that we need to be aware of how symbols and words and things that we use could be misconstrued. I think that's a good thing. 
Then it's one of the reasons that when I did a video just recently on whether or not Christians should use the rebel flag, I kind of leaned on the side of it's probably not a good idea. Like, what do you really gain from it? The risk outweighs the potential reward. But at the same time, I find it funny that all the people that are saying, well, you know, with Black Lives Matter, there's just nuance there. And you need to understand that not every single person that is using the slogan or using the hashtag or wears a BLM shirt is supporting the Black Lives Matter organization at the national level, that a lot of them don't even realize it is an organization, which, by the way, is true. It's I've said that on the show before, but I'm saying if that is going to be your defense, extend that same level of grace to these teenage girls that I very much doubt, especially considering they cheer for black athletes on a team with black athletes on their cheerleading squad, that these girls have some kind of deep-seated racial animosity that they were trying to communicate with this picture. It's never a good idea that when a perceived action can pre be perceived a one way that is mostly benign, and another one that is incredibly evil and wicked that we always rush to the worst possible interpretation of said action. I think that it's 100% rational, reasonable, and more importantly, Christian, to at least when we can, or unless we have good reason to, do otherwise, always assume the best possible interpretation out of people. We might get disappointed from time to time, but ultimately, I think that that's the better default mode to have, to just assume that people don't hate us or they don't mean things the worst possible way that they can, to assume that they're trying to do the right thing here. But if we are going to hold ourselves to that standard, we need to, or if we're going to hold people that we dislike to that standard, uh, that we like to that standard, we also have to hold people that we dislike or that may not necessarily agree with us to that same standard as well. That's the fair way to handle it. And I think that everybody on both sides would benefit if we could do that. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them. I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.